basically human being as a high possibility for growth. If both decide the possibility and decide never to deny, then I will call that as life of Rishi. Both agree maturing of our taste should be the center of the relationship. Then it's an amazing marriage, I tell you. As couple people who are connected with me, they live a real life of heaven. <laughs> the maturing of the taste, if there's any imbalance, that's it. And I'm not talking even about the devotees whom I'm seeing. Even in the regular life, sometimes a person, when he grows a little bit, his communist ideas may evolve into capitalist. When he, you see, when he has no responsibility, he will be communist. When an individual responsibility comes, he will be capitalist. When the whole responsibility comes, he will be really beyond capitalism. A kind of, I should say, I should develop a new name for Sadashiva's economy. So he will move to that. So even in the life, your taste, your taste in the field of entertainment, your taste in the field of food or your taste in the field of thinking, strategies, economy in multiple levels. The maturing of the taste is always nullified if the other partner is not willing to raise. It is like a, sometimes you will have such high, profound open up. But when you come back, you have to be, you are expected to be same as you left yesterday. It is mandatory. And for the sake of the other person's consumption, consumption, sorry, consumption, when you try to get back to the older state, you also forget the opening up happened. Marriage has killed millions of discoveries because you are mandatorily expected to be the same person and this confirmation that you are a same person and you are still in love denies multiple opening up and both understanding we will grow and celebrate each other in every level, will be the real marriage. It all boils down to, let us be open. See, let me very clearly put it. The Sabdapati, seven vows Agama Sadashiva gives in marriage. He beautifully describes, sex is the act between two individuals who revere and celebrate each other, that act does not need to be used to confirm that love exists between each other and that act does not need to be the scale to measure both of us are still in the same plane. Understand? It should be independent of our maturing and maturity of the taste. It should neither be bonding force nor be confirming force but be sharing act. But so much of insecurity about the confirmation about others, other person's love or the other per, our need for the other person's life you always wanted to confirm your existence is needed in the other person's life. 
So this insecurity denies possibility of any opening or happening or growth. If this understanding is brought between the two person and me shedding more old skin and you shedding more old skins is going to make us more better related and we both are going to celebrate our togetherness more joyfully can make marriage the real marriage like Minakshi and Sundareshwara. Minakshi and Sundareshwara. I should say that is what makes Sadashiva and Parvati. So always make sure before marriage, both of you understand the possibility of the opening up. Today your idea about money will be different, tomorrow it will be different. Today your ideas about love will be different, tomorrow it will be different. Today your idea about the entertainment will be different, tomorrow it will be different. So both of us, we will revere, not just respect, revere, reciprocate our maturities. And we will celebrate each other's maturity. And respect the need for maturity to be alive. If somebody is listening to the same music for 10 years, the fellows need to be buried as quickly as possible. <laughs> no, the maturing of the taste has not happened. And that is what you are expecting from your spouse, then you are living with a dead body and that is going to torture you like a ghost. Understand? Maybe that understanding will, the first vow itself, let's grow everything together, share everything together. The second vow, let us do all the cultural, social, spiritual activities together and constantly mature and celebrate our maturity. In the Sabdabadi vows, very beautifully, Sadashiva gives that seven vows. So would it be right to say that um, the basis of marriage should be um, enlightenment? A, a, a journey together towards enlightenment? I should say, I should say base, not even enlightenment, uh, supporting each other in the growth. So, so it's certainly uh, not a legal contract as it is seen in the West. Marriages should not be seen as a contract between two people to coexist and share their life. In Hinduism, no divorce. Till death, you can't divorce. I'm sorry, I didn't get that. In Hinduism, no divorce. It is cosmic contract. So it's a sacrosanct. If you are afraid of legal contract, it is cosmic contract in Hinduism. Got it. No divorce. Thank you, sir. Clear? Yes. Uh, Do you know Sanskrit does not have the equivalent word for divorce? We don't have divorce. I should say Hindu marriage does not have divorce. It has an important aspect of initiation and training before marriage which is missing, is causing the whole mess to this country. Right. Premarital education which need to be done is missing. That is causing the whole mess. Otherwise, I strongly deny the very possibility of divorce. The very idea of divorce should be destroyed. Thank you, sir. Thoroughly get educated. Try once. If it fails, take sannyas. Now that is as simple as this. 